Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to unbox, assemble, and first print the Ender 2 Revision 2. This is the new modified version of the Ender 2 that comes with the normal brick PSU instead of the external power brick. So we're going to see how that goes. Stay tuned. So here it is in the box. I'm going to unbox everything in here, spread it out for you so you can see, and I will be right back. Alrighty, inside, um, basically all the same parts as any other Ender you've ever done, except for this one, of course, comes with a European power cable and a US adapter plug. You can also use any standard US power plug and just cut the end off or cut this end off and replace it with a US plug. It now uses a standard internal PSU instead of a power brick, and here is your switch to switch between US and um, non-US power, 110 and 220 power. I did notice that this is not 3D printed anymore. This is now an ABS molded part. It looks like it attaches in two places, so here and here. So screw in each location to hold that on, and you would have 110 volt coming in, 12 volt coming out to the printer, and that's it. That would be your power supply. I'm going to look into making a new version of this. I'd like to make a base that goes on the bottom of this, so that this will actually be part of the base like that. I think that would look a whole heck of a lot better. So I'm going to work on designing a part like that. I can print something that big on one of my printers. Otherwise, same components as usual. This is your bed, your X, Y, and Z limit switches. This is your entire X and Z riser carriage, um, your Y and Z stepper motors, your filament sample with SD card and reader, your hot end assembly, your structural members, your vertical with the screw rod inside, and your X arm with the same drilled hole, your scraper, your filament spool holder and your bag of goodies which includes your zip ties, your tool kit, all your screw bits, belt, ends of your stepper, I mean your um, spool holder, and your nippers. So I'm going to begin assembly and I'll turn on the video here and there at different points as I move through the process. Stay tuned. Oh it also comes with a the materials, what's inside the box, and also instructions letting you know to switch power and how to do that using the switch on the side here, and instructions on how to affix the cover and plug in the wires for the new power supply. And actually, that's pretty cool. This is something new, a basic set of instructions showing the assembly of each of the set of components to a point giving me relative positions and whatnot. That's actually pretty cool. I'll use that just for the heck of it. They are taking the advice on their other printers as well. I made the suggestion. No, I don't know if this came from me. I imagine other people have made this suggestion as well as I have, but the fact that they're improving it is awesome. So the X, Y, and Z are all marked. All these bags, except for the belt, which is quite self-explanatory, is marked. So this just says screw pack, so that includes extra, I believe this is the extra screws and the hammer nuts. Filament holder nut, so the two nuts and the screws to hold the filament assembly on top of the printer. Hotbed screw kit, I'll be replacing these springs with the better springs and your nuts and your screws. Your M34s, I believe these are the ones that I'm going to be using to hold the cover in place on the power supply and your z-axis reinforcement bracket that goes in between this and this down here when you screw these two parts together to reinforce that assembly that's pretty cool and it also says right on here ender 2 which i like that's pretty cool although it's on the little bag inside i kind of wish they had that on the big bag on the outside so put right on here, Ender 2, and then all the extra stuff that you have when you're done, you can stick in the bag and it says Ender 2. I think that'd be pretty cool. But that's just a small thing. Looks like same heat bed, although that's a little bit of insulation on there that wasn't there before, I don't think. That's interesting. Get a better reading from your thermistor. 
and also now uh, same print bed as before, which I'm quite happy with. This, this print surface actually works very well. Time to get to assembly. Although I did not expect it to be a problem, as with any printer, take your tools, check all the bolts for tightness. I found not one single loose bolt anywhere on this printer, and I didn't expect to, but always check just in case. Things can get loose during shipment. Um, it's best to do that, especially on this, before you install anything, because these bolts down here in these brackets can be hard to get to um, before you've got them all installed, so it's best to do that first. And I am now installing the vertical, and after I'm done installing the vertical, I will install the bed, and I will be back. Don't forget when you put your bed on, make sure this bracket's tight first. Um, when you go to put your bed on, if there's any play, you can just feed the wrench in through here, and it will come in through here like this and attach to this concentric bolt and that will allow you to tighten the bed so that when you put it on there is absolutely no play whatsoever in that bed silky smooth now something interesting the stepper for the Y went on just fine limit switch went on just fine this however was backwards on every other ender I have including the picture this is on this side but because they have this assembly this pulley assembly reversed I have to put it on this side not a big deal it goes on this side just fine but it does mean that um, it's a little harder to tighten up the bolts because you don't have the free access on this side as you do on the other side but it seems to work just fine so for now I'm going to leave it like that I'll swap it if I absolutely have to when you assemble this part here so this is your z-axis x-axis gantry arm assembly um, you have to use these two holes here before you assemble it onto the tower to attach this to this using the two screws that are in here with the hammer nuts. And the problem is those two hammer nuts are non-standard. None of these wrenches correctly fits. The second largest wrench will start to tighten them down but it's too loose so you've got to put the wrench at an angle and very gently turn and none of my wrenches correctly fits those bolts. So they are just some weird oddball bolt. At some point in time, I'm going to replace those because there's just something wrong with those bolts. But we'll see. So just be careful tightening them down. Bed is fully installed, belts installed, gantry is installed, tightened up on the coupler. I'm now going to install the actual trolley and belt for that. Alrighty, printer is assembled. I put a PEI sheet on this instead of the built-in print bed. Built-in print bed's fine, I just want to have one printer with PEI. I also threw a piece of Capricorn tubing on here just to bypass the cruddy tubing that it comes with. And you can also shorten it a little bit. You can knock about an inch and a half off of it and you're fine. As long as you have enough to reach out there without pulling on this head, you're fine. So, that length is perfect. And now I will assemble the power supply. I have already taken a standard C13 power cable. I've snipped the end off of it, pulled it back, stripped the wires, and I will simply plug that into the power supply instead of the European power plug it comes with. So I'm already set to go. If you don't want to mess with that, it does come with a two-prong US adapter, but I figured just put the proper cord on it right from the get-go. These things are like a dollar. If you swap the wires yourself, just do remember that the yellow-green one is your ground wire. The reddish pinkish one is your live wire, and the blue one is your neutral wire. The ports are marked. One thing I like to do, you notice that nothing sticks out on here, and I can tug on these. But what I did was I um, bent the wires inside the box like this, so that they're bent over like that. And what I do is I put a zip tie right on here, real tight. The same thing with the 12 volt wire. This way, if you go to tug on these wires, the zip tie will act as a grommet and hit the edge of this hole and not let it pass through so you're not actually yanking on the connections inside. That's pretty important because if somebody ever tugs on this, see, it stops right there because as you see, that's where the zip tie is, right there. So this way the actual wires inside aren't being yanked on. You should use a bigger zip tie than I use because that hole is pretty big but it doesn't come through so I'm okay with that. Eventually I'm going to design an entire end for this with an actual C13 plug on the back so you can just plug it in. Or, I might just say screw all this crap, since it is just 12 volts going out, I might put an actual barrel plug 
receptacle, a female, on the end of this wire so I can use any normal standard power supply like a Xbox power supply. This is 12 volt 20 amps, which is more than the Xbox power supply, so we'll see. I think the Xbox power supply is 16, but we'll go from there. I'm going to try to design a base for this so that this will be like this. So the printer will just be taller, and this will all be enclosed inside the base with enough room, obviously, for um, the fan to work. Flip it over, have feet on the bottom so the fan can exhaust itself. But I think that'll look a lot nicer. It'll maintain that nice, compact nature that I love so much about the Enders. But we'll go from there. Supposedly, this one can get the higher bed temperatures. Somebody told me they reached 100 C on this bed, so we'll see if that's true or not. Stay tuned while I get this thing loaded up and ready to print. Well, that, my dear critters, is a dead printer. I don't know what's going on with it. Um, first, I plug it in, and the printer does not. This printer is off, and the bed and nozzle start heating up. I just happened to notice when I put my hand over it. It's like, why is that warm? <laughs> um, I change power supplies, no different. I am getting 120 in, I am getting 12 volt out, 12.45 volt out, but the printer does nothing. It's getting the 12 volts, but it's not doing nothing with it. So, time to contact Reality and find out what's going on. So, that's it for today. On to the next printer until I hear back from Reality.